Hello, this is Dr. Vev talking about center of mass. And today I will talk about how to find the center of mass of an object that is not discrete. So we have something continuous like a rod for example that's a rod it's got length L so I'll um, put it along the x-axis and uh, the left end of the rod is at x equals 0 and the right end of the rod is at x equals L and uh, any point of the rod can be thought of as being some distance x from the uh, from the left end now if you're talking a really small portion of the rod I can think of that as having length dx in the sense of calculus it's a really small length now because it's the center of mass I want to find some way of converting this length to a mass and for that purpose I'm going to introduce what's called a linear mass density I'll call it lambda and it is defined as dm over dx so you can see that lambda must have units of uh, mass which is kg and length which are meters so it's going to be kg per meter and so uh, if I solve for dm I'm going to get dm equals lambda dx so this tells us how the uh, length of this little element relates to the mass of that same element. Now um, to define the center of mass you normally would have um, used the following definition which is sum over all the ith particles mass times the ith particle distance divided by the sum of all the masses. Well if you take this to the continuous limit mass points are replaced by these dm's so it's going to be the x i will just be x and this m i will become dm divided by the integral of all these m i's which again become dm's so that's going to be our new formula for the center of mass um, and if you put the limits you're going to be getting integral of 0 to l um, x times lambda dx divided by the integral from 0 to L of just lambda dx. So that's the basic um, procedure to find the center of mass of any um, object in one dimension. In two and three dimensions it's slightly more complicated but the general principle is the same. So let's do an example of um, actually putting this thing to practice. The first and simplest example is imagine that you have a rod that does not change in its nature. It's a uniform rod made of a single material of constant density. So I'll just say lambda is just lambda naught, not meaning it's a constant. Uh, if it's lambda naught, it can be pulled out of the integral sign. And so let's see what we get for the center of mass of this um, object. It's going to be the integral from 0 to L x times lambda naught dx divided by integral from 0 to L of just lambda naught dx. I pull out the lambda naught and I get x dx to the integral 0 to L dx. Now you can see that the lambda naughts cancel out. Now if I evaluate this I'm going to I'm going to get x squared over 2 0 to L divided by x from 0 to L. Let's just not holding it steady. Hold it steady. So that's uh, 1 half L squared divided by L or 1 half L. Now that's exactly what you expect. A rod that's uniform should have its center of mass exactly in the middle. So let's take another example, slightly better 
uh, example this bears out what you already know let's take an example of a rod which actually increases in mass as you go from left to right so this could be something like uh, a times x okay so this would be a rod for example that starts out being really light weight on this end and somehow it keeps gaining mass so one way to make a rod like this is to imagine that you have a small triangular um, pennant and uh, the, the mass of this pennant keeps increasing as you go out because it's of a triangular shape so that's one way to make a rod like this other ways to make the rod include putting nails at appropriate places so let's find the center of mass of this thing using the same definitions i get integral zero to l and now lambda is replaced now by ax so i'm going to get x times ax which is ax squared dx and the denominator i just have the integral from zero to l um, lambda of x dx which is just ax dx uh, the a here is a constant so i can bring it out of the integral sign and it is a times integral zero to l x squared dx divided by a times the integral from zero to l x dx okay the a's cancel out just like just like the lambda naught's cancelled out over there so this gives me x squared over uh, x cubed excuse me over three from zero to l and downstairs it's going to be x squared over two from zero to l and let's try to evaluate that um that's going to be l cubed over three over l squared over two and that's just two-thirds L. So as, as expected, the center of mass of this rod is a little bit further out. And this, by the way, is the center of mass of a triangle also. It is the centroid of a triangle. So that model I was talking about of making a rod of this uh, type ends up giving us a centroid of a triangle. And if you have any other function of x, you will obviously keep uh, building it up. If you, for example, try lambda x equals ax squared, then as you uh, have probably guessed, that's going to be the centroid of a cone. So um, I would like you to try, I'll write here, try um, lambda of x, let's call it b now, bx squared. And, and if you try this out and find its um, xcom, you will end up getting the centroid of a, of a cone because that will be like a baseball bat or something like that. Uh, which increases out something like this okay. so if you have a baseball bat its density keeps increasing out like that in this fashion and the centroid of this will be further out it'll be somewhere here okay so that's my uh, lesson today on finding the center of mass of different continuous objects thanks for watching